welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Once upon a time, a screen hero was born. With 1.92 metres in height, bright green eyes and darkish blonde hair, Lex Barker looks almost ready to be the male attraction of his time. He was, of course, the wonderful guy for millions of teenagers, being the famous old Shatterhand of all time. Sadly, his life ended tragically the way it did, and for over a century now, fans still wish that it never happened. They keep talking about his exploits. Is Lex Barker the best Tarzan actor of all time? It's several years now since this screen hero tragically left humanity, but his legacy remains fresh in the minds of many. Talking about Lex Barker. He was one of the finest characters with his lively on-screen outlook that made him a natural showman. Anywhere each of the old Winner 2 films is shown, fans go berserk in excitement, especially with one man who was the centre of attention. Barker was a rare talent who thrilled his audience with a very energetic performance. His fearless image may just be a replica of his real life. His never-say-die spirit readily comes to mind when we remember his movie outing. His German audience would want to turn the hands of time each time they reminisce the Frenchman Pierre Bryce showing as winner two alongside Lex Barker as Old Butterfly. These two film pairs were among the famous talents of German cinema in the 1960s, and their widely acclaimed success was then credited to director Harold Reinl for about six years, as it cemented the actor's typecast roles. It was, however, surprising that neither of them played similar interesting film roles thereafter, when Johnny Weissmuller left the Tarzan series, RKO studio decision-makers needed a good replacement that would keep the show alive. Barker was told to serve Big Boots, and he brightly understood the task, and immediately a fresh Tarzan lead was born. Appearing as Edgar Rice Burroughs' idea of a jungle man, Barker rose to remarkable fame, but his most amazing moments on screen remain the leading man role in Carl May's novel adaptation, Old Shatterhand, a film series produced by the West German studio Constantin Film. Barker was also at his best appearing as Anita Eckberg's fiancée in Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita, not forgetting also his depiction of the Deer Slayer. This great American actor, at the climax of his dominance in the movie industry, became one of the most famous actors in German-speaking cinema, with notable nominations and honours before his tragic demise, which occurred three days after his 54th birthday. Barker played several roles in action movies, including appearing as officers, investigators, pirates and Vikings, just to mention. His minor roles in legendary film noir movies like Potter's The Farmer's Daughter and Dimitrix Crossfire, all in 1947, were more like a preparatory class for what was to come, Although critics fingered Providence as the reason producer Sol Lesser chose his huge athletic build, plus those stunning good looks, rather than his acting style for the Tarzan role. Commenting on this, author Burroughs agreed that Barker was the perfect epitome of his Tarzan, and that with him satisfaction was guaranteed. His early acting know-how and volunteering in the Second World War put him up for the big stage. Barker's film career was promising though with rough years with Tingle Theatre before the big break, due largely to his dazzling looks. And by the age of 43, he had gathered more flesh around the hips and had to drop the famous loincloth. At the time, Barker's popularity grew as much as his career fears. Rumours have it that at parties and related publics, strangers challenged him to utter the Tarzan yell or show his impressive chest. Rather than continuing, Barker shifted his attention to Western adventure and action films. No doubt he was drafted in because of his look, which soon attracted huge female audiences. Observers also commended the macho man in him as an admirable jungle king. And after he made that move, he told his fans, It's great to be able to wear clothes again. I like speaking like a civilised person. This great talent was swimming in stardom. He was still in his prime when tragedy struck as he left millions of fans in grief. Reports say Lex Barker was hoping to work with Johnny Weissmuller to create a kind of Tarzan country, similar to that of the Disney classic. He returned to the United States and tried to prepare himself physically for more Hollywood roles with an even harder training schedule. 
He plays tennis in the daytime, and by sundown the heavy smoker retired to parties, where he usually downed several bottles of drinks and had romantic affairs as he deems fit. It became his routine, living a life of a classic superstar. After losing 15 kilos in weight, Barker found himself complaining of a recurring leg injury and its attendant pain, plus sharp pains in his chest, a sign that tragedy was lurking behind. It was a bright day around noon on the 11th of May 1973. Barker was about to cross over to Lexington Avenue in Manhattan when he collapsed on the sidewalk. Those who saw him fall report that he had one of his hands pressed on his left breast as his face looked anguishly in pain. And what happened? A soul is lost as this incredible talent dies on the spot. Heart attack. An eyewitness said he had no identity card at the time of the incident, prompting the police to take the unknown body to the morgue. A design on the side of his watch later assisted police to identify the name Alexander C. Barker, and later traced it to an address in Beverly Hills. Alexander Critchlow Barker Jr., famously known as Lex Barker, was born in 1919 in New York, the son of Alexander Critchlow Barker Sr., who was identified as a Canadian-born wealthy upper-class personality, and his mother, ex-Marion Thornton Beals. Growing up in New York, saw young Barker attending the Fessenden School and finished at Phillips Exeter Academy. Back then, his love and talent for football in particular were outstanding as he played football with zeal. Barker was a lively fella and distinguished himself at school sports where he was well known for his physical talents. He was always available in sports like swimming, football, fencing and tennis where he was said to have always excelled. He could not complete his academics at Princeton University because of his interest in performing arts. Sooner he connected a theatrical stock company against the wish of his parents. Barker's earliest show on Broadway was a small part in a brief run of Shakespeare's The Merry Wives of Windsor in 1938. We also saw his brief presence in Orson Welles' unfortunate Five Kings, which was heavily criticised in Boston and Philadelphia, causing its failure. In the heat of the war in 1941, very patriotic Barker left his hatchling acting career for the US military, where he subsequently earned the rank of major and was later wounded while fighting in Sicily. After recovering in US military hospital and subsequent discharge from service, Barker became a ready-made tool for the thriller movie world with his military training, and not too long he was given a script to appear in a minor role in Dollface in 1945. That film was significant as the beginning of his film career. After showing in the Western Return of the Bad Men in 1948, Barker got his movie breakthrough when he was drafted in for Tarzan's Magic Fountain in 1949, making him the tenth official Tarzan of the shows. In no time, his blonde, attractive and macho appearance sold him to the audience. He became very famous, even more than Johnny Weissmuller, who had been there for the past 16 years. Lex Barker made just five Tarzan films, but he counts as one of the actors best respected for his role in Tarzan. Sometime in 1957, when he was through with the Tarzan project, Barker had difficulty getting a movie role in Hollywood, so he decided to try Europe because he was fluent in French, Italian, Spanish and a little German, a skill that worked to his advantage. Critics say the move to Europe was a brave decision by Lex Barker, just like many other stars who could not find their fit in the American film industry at the time. Through England, he journeyed to Italy, where he did very well in trendy adventure movies. He filmed in Spain and France, thanks to his linguistic prowess in the local languages, and before we could say Jack Robinson, Barker found favour in that region, starring in more than 40 European movies, especially in Germany, where he appeared in 12 movie versions of the novels by German author Karl May, depicting the popular May characters, Old Shatterhand seven times, Cara Ben Nemsi three times, and that of Dr. Karl Sternau in two movies. But before then, his image got a lift when the famous Federico Fellini cast him in La Dolce Vita, where he depicted a drunken ex-Tarzan performer who earned so much prestige. Also remarkable was when Lex Barker met Arthur Brauner, the German producer who linked him to the film industry. Playing the part of a detective in search of the infamous film bad guy Dr. Mabuse, 
Lex shined in his role as FBI man Joe Como in the double monocolour crime thrillers Return of Dr. Mabuse and The Invisible Dr. Mabuse, and his fame soared extraordinarily. Reports said that a bright photo of Barker's film was noticed by the winner to producer Horst Wendland. At a time he was looking for a second person, already found the perfect winner to in Pierre Bryce, but was still searching for old Shatterhand character, which he found. A school of thought said Barker's nature of blonde hair made him more German than all Germans. Was it also why Hollywood did not bother about him as one of their own? Horst Wendland took the risk to create Wild West movies with a very high budget. No one gave it a chance, but his tricks worked, with Barker at the centre as the movies broke records and became the foundation for other Western film gurus, like Sergio Leone followed. But most importantly, it puts Barker on the radar as the biggest name in the European film industry at the time. His fame was even more pronounced compared to those dominating in Hollywood, the likes of Clint Eastwood. Ironically, it seems the American audience has forgotten about him, but his fame quickly overshadowed their superstar. That was the height Barker's talent took him. Although he visited the state occasionally and made a few guest appearances on American television episodes, None of that could compare to his success outside the US and achieving his biggest fame in Germany. At some point after Lex Barker had gotten exactly what his career needed, superstardom, he left Europe and technically was back to his homeland where he keenly hoped for a Hollywood opportunity because he still believed he had so much to offer. Some said Barker preferred to work in Hollywood and live in the US. Perhaps he was banking on his fame for an opportunity to entertain his American audience again but his effort towards that yielded very little, with age and other factors still working against his attraction in Hollywood. So he settled with a few guest appearances in popular television series like the FBI drama episode Three Way Split and others. Around 1973, Lex Barker's Hollywood career got a green light. He appeared in the lead role for the German production When You're With Me, which was filmed in 1970. It, unfortunately, was his last picture outing. Critics say there was a renewed hope for Barker in Hollywood with an arrangement for a television series with him in the lead role, in progress and all plans reaching an advanced stage. It was supposed to be an exciting moment for him after several disappointments over the past few years. Like the proverbial saying, fate struck against his will. When we needed him most to prove to the audience that he has come of age and possibly took a second shot at fame, the news of his death came and spread through the air like a wildfire. Interestingly, Barker also had a boisterous love life, marrying as many as five times with lots of intrigues that defined his private life. He was first married to Constance Rhodes Thurlow in 1942. The marriage produced a daughter, Lynn, and a son, Alexander. That union ended in divorce sometime in 1950. The following year, he got married to actress Arlene Dahl, but that marriage quickly ended within months, for a reason best known to them. Barker later married actress Lana Turner in 1953. Several things went wrong with that union, including some regrettable behaviour that Barker was accused of, which observers said led to the total collapse of the marriage that lasted for about five years before ending in 1957. That connubial with Hollywood superstar Lana Turner was, without mincing words, bedeviled with hydra-headed problems. Turner had a miscarriage and suffered severe depression and alcoholism. Barker did not help the issue as he took his turn with other women in several illicit affairs, not minding his marriage. I even hear that a fracas had ensured that made Turner ordered him out of their home with a gun, leading to the eventual divorce. Barker's freestyling with women did not help his life. I'm not sure if it's why a famous actress irritated him with a mocking remark by calling him Sexy Lexi, a name that stuck to his personality till his death. It seemed Barker was searching for love because he was not through with marriages. That same year he got hooked on Swiss actress Irene Labhardt. They had a son together before tragedy struck. Irene died in 1962. Barker was also married to Tita Chavera, and that one became so complicated because they were separated by 1972. Not legally divorced, but his wife, who became Miss Spain in 1962, went ahead to marry movie producer Espartaco Santoni in 1975, a union that was considered a bigamous marriage.
There was even a report that the day Barker collapsed in the middle of the road and died, he may have been walking down the street to meet up with his fiancée, actress Karen Kondazian. Maybe she could have been his sixth wife or something, but the ugly hands of death prevented that one. And at his funeral, his last wife, Tita Chavera, took the cremated ashes back to Spain. Be sure to check out our next video, where we delve into the surprising revelation of why Brigitte Bardot considered her child a tumour in her life.